If you're using Thrive Leads and trying to figure out how to get hidden fields working in here, well, there are two ways. Quickly, well, first you can click this edit HTML and add it there, or you can go through the custom HTML forms. So let me show you how both work. Whether you're going to do the custom HTML or the custom API connection, you are going to have to know how your newsletter service handles hidden fields. In our case, we use MailChimp and I created a hidden field that's not visible and I called it source because I like to know where my leads are coming from and how people sign up, what campaign, what form, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, this has to be customized in each form, but it's pretty easy to use and very handy. So we are gonna use MailChimp over here for your newsletter provider, whatever it is, refer to your documentation how they want this information entered because this tutorial is uh, sadly uh, MailChimp specific. If you want others, let me know. I'll, I'll get you that information, but let's continue with MailChimp and see how that goes. Let's start by editing the API connection. Now, as we know, if we connect with service and we're using an API connection, such as with the one with MailChimp, we are stuck with these three forms, if whatever it has by default. And it's kind of annoying because I want more. I want other things, right? Well, in order to do that, we have to first not use the actual API connection. We have to use a custom HTML form. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, I don't want to code my own HTML form. You mostly don't have to. What you do have to go, and here again, we're using MailChimp, you have to go and get the form code that your service provider gives you. And I'm using from, from MailChimp, I'm just using the naked one here. And why the naked one? Just because I don't want, you know, some extra code floating around in there. So just in case, that's just personal preference. I'm gonna copy and paste that in here. What this will do, and I click generate, you don't have to code much of anything. You just copy and paste it in here and it automatically detects what fields are there. Now, as you might see this being a problem because my form previously only had the email slot and that's what I want. So this is where it's kind of sort of programming. We do have to go back in here and we have to remove whichever items we don't care to have. So uh, don't care about the name, the industry, state, web, phone, don't care. Email, Ooh, email is important. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the email uh, name. Don't care about in this case, let's not care about the name. And now we have a simple, let's get just the email field and make sure it's validated by email. Now, here's how we get the hidden field. Very simple. This is some HTML and some coding, but it's super simple. Check this out. All we do is I just took this one here, copy and paste. And this is not an email field. This is a hidden field. So as name states, this is a hidden type field. That's all. I'll change the type to hidden. The name is going to be something. So let me just delete this extra stuff. We don't need the class. The name and the class and the ID are well, the name is important and the value is important and the type is important. The ID, not as much. That's kind of just for you. But I like to have the ID in there for reference for just kind of styling stuff if I need to. Now, what do we put for the rest of the stuff here? And what do we put for name and what do we put for value? Those are the questions, right? Well, like I said, the ID is not needed per se, but I like to have it. So I just use the same name that I'm going to use it for name. And what do we put there? Well, in MailChimp, at least, we put this thing right here. No, none of those. No, I don't like to put the actual merge tag, you know, the non-descript ones. I like to say exactly what I'm using. So I'm just going to copy this, or I could write it really because you know, it's a short name. And I paste it in there. YMCE. That's just MailChimp's editor. That's what it stands for. Uh, prefix, um, you don't need it, but I like to have it just to keep things consistent. And for name, this is the important one. Listen up, just copy and paste. Whatever you have here in this row, you could technically use this, but just use this in there, just that. So I have source. Now the value is the value that's gonna be passed to MailChimp to your newsletter provider. So what I'm going to put here, since I'm using my website, I'm going to put PK, so PK.com, PK, and I'm going to make up a campaign because let's say we're leading this to a specific form on a specific campaign from a specific ad set, uh, whatever we want. I, I try to be as descriptive here as possible for future reference. So uh, awesome event, let's say this was February, what's that, 21st? Yeah, 
2016, I think. And um, FB adds uh, one. I know I'm bad with names. I know. But point being, be as descriptive as you can on here or be generic. Um, some of mine, by the way, are as simple as um, it's actually one of mine because I just uh, tossed up a generic uh, form. So it's generic form one. And I have that actually running as one of mine because simply I do have a generic form running on my blog right now. It really is generic and kind of just there. So I didn't need too much information to know what it's going for. Um, but I generally, for other forms, try to be as descriptive as possible to let me know, this is not for people, to let me and whoever's gonna be going through my data know where this came from and where these people come from, from, from which campaign, from which source, to which page, to which specific form. You know, you can put form top, form bottom, form left, or whatever. This is your choice right here. Now, I copy this just in case. Now, so here we have our form. We click generate fields. Nothing changed. Oh, no. That's okay because it's a hidden field. So it's not going to show up here, of course. We simply click save and you're done. That's how you edit this button area. Now, let's instead, what if we wanted to do it the HTML way? Let me show you that. Now let's edit the code well, the HTML way. Depending on your point of view, this could be easier or it could be harder. Um, depends how you see things. So previously we clicked on this button, we went through this custom HTML way here. Now if you want to edit the overall HTML without touching the API connection, because you can, no matter what is here, so let me show you actually even, I'm going to reset this completely to just plain old MailChimp. So let me show you how that works. Uh, it's blah, 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 doesn't matter what's there. All right, so we have regular MailChimp over there now. So now what we're gonna do is top right over here, it's gonna click on HTML. This is the undo, redo, you know, those buttons, the middle one, HTML. It's gonna look scary, I know. It's kind of squished together. But kind of like what we did with the button, we have to add some HTML in here. And where do we add it? Well, if you, probably before the submit button, my personal preference, and before the end of form, and yet if, if we find it, it'll be the after the start of the form. So basically, I kind of put it right at the end. And we, again, have to use the same name and similar-ish code for... We don't have to copy and paste anything from here, by the way. What we're going to have to do is just, let's see, where's a slightly pre-made one for us already? Ah, this one's pre-made. It's going to copy and paste this one. Um, there's no reason why I picked this one. It's just felt like it. You can pick any one, or you can write your own. So... Input type is equal to hidden. Uh, let's see, name is equal to source, just like we had before. Uh, ID, again, like I said, ID is not required, but I like to have it just in case. MCE source. And now the all important one, the value. PK, my awesome form. Blue bar, you know, whatever value you need it to pass, be passed there. And that's it. And then we click save and you're done. That's how you basically enter hidden fields into the Thrive Leads for whatever you might need, whether it's the source or other data you need to pass. That's that simple. HTML up here or the custom HTML from the buttons.